मैं खाली स्क्रीन टा देखू जाए हाँ सर हाँ सर श्योर सर 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 यस रिकॉर्डिंग स्टार्ट कॉल कॉल हाँ हाँ कॉल है ना Uh, good afternoon all uh, welcome to the online class of odisha state open university and uh, today our topic is introduction to macro economics and uh, as all of us know it is uh, a branch of economics that studies the behavior and performance of an economy as a whole and it focuses on the aggregate changes in the economy such as unemployment growth rate gross domestic uh, gross domestic product inflation etc uh, there are three types of macro economic policies and uh, they are fiscal policy monetary policy and supply side policy so basically we will be discussing the introductory part of the macro economics and uh, later in the subsequent class we will be studying uh, uh, national income uh, equilibrium national income accounting uh, uh, problems of macro uh, economics and government policies etc so for today's class uh, we have dr ashish das as our resource person who is academic consultant uh, department of economics uh, odisha state open university sambalpur and before starting of this session i would like to request the learners to unmute uh, mute their mic and uh, to avoid unusual disturbance during the class and if uh, they have any doubts or queries they can uh, type in the chat box and all your queries will be discussed uh, at the end of the session by our resource person so may i request uh, dr ashish das sir to, uh, to please start the session thank you oh a very good evening to dear learners uh today we will be discussing a very important topic this is important because this is starting and the concepts are very essential and the topic is macro economics and the economic indian economy this is in your geco that is generic elective 2 block 1 now coming to macro and indian economy you have some idea already about economics and sir also has mentioned in particularly in this block we would be this the has two different units and the unit one is basically covering the meaning and concept of macroeconomics and the unit two covers the economic system as a whole so we shall be focusing on these two aspect that is the meaning and concept of macroeconomics and the understanding of the economic system let me start with the meaning and concept of macroeconomics and what would be the learning objectives Up, after studying this particular uh, unit you would be understanding the basic difference between the microeconomics and macroeconomics they are two different branch of economics but they are highly interrelated we should also be knowing the importance and the objectives of macroeconomics and the third area that we would be discovering or discussing would be the components of macroeconomics now coming to the difference between micro and macroeconomics uh, many places you would be seeing that the macroeconomics deals with the decision making of a single economic variable such as demand price or consumer whereas the macroeconomic deals with Uh, averages and aggregates of the entire economy such as national income aggregate output and aggregate saving now here i would like to recall about aristotle's logic aristotle was talking about what is true for the 
individual may not be true for the aggregate or what is true for a component may not be true for the whole like um, for example in microeconomics we are discussing about the individual units now for an individual consumer saving may be very good but when we are talking about the entire economy imagine if everyone starts saving what is going to happen so what is true for individual need not necessarily be true for the entire economy or the whole it may be good for the individual to save while it may not be good if everyone starts saving and nobody invests so second thing that i would like to make it very clear in the beginning that even microeconomics deals with aggregate for example we are talking about industry which is an aggregate of different farms and in micro in macroeconomics also we talk about uh, the units however the macroeconomics basically looks at the from the broader perspectives or the aggregate pictures mostly so the the scope of microeconomics is basically narrow and it interprets the small constituents the starting unit of analysis each the uh, small constituents like farm in the analysis the unit of analysis entire economic now it is also known as the price theory that is microeconomics is also known as price theory because the entire focus of farms or uh, is on fixation of price individual also looks at the price that he would be paid as a consumer to purchase any commodity therefore microeconomics also is also known as the price theory because it explains the process of economic resource allocations on the foundation of relative prices of several goods and services so this is also microeconomics is also known as the theory of pricing or price price theory on the other hand if you look at macroeconomics it is known as income theory because it explains the changing level of income of an economy during a particular period of time maybe for one year or two years or a decade or so so while the microeconomics is basically the price theory is known as the price theory the macroeconomics can be defined as the income theory then the next difference can be that is that the microeconomics deals with the flow of various factors of productions from a single owner to a single user of these resources while macroeconomics deals with the circular flow of income and expenditure between different sectors of the economy this circular flow means how the income each for example one's income is somebody else expenditure now how the households household as an owner of factors of productions also receive factor payments for from different agents in the economy for example government as an employer or any producer as an employer hires the uh, factors of productions from the uh, household who is the owner of the factors of production now this household who is the owner of the factors of productions like labor capital um, gives the labor labor services to the organizations like government or any other entrepreneur and earns factor incomes in the form of wage similarly the household also saves money which is in banking institutions and banking institution facilitates the uh, farms to take this surplus money and use it for investment purposes so accordingly a circular flow is created where the income of some individuals becomes the expenditure for some and the expenditure of some becomes the income of others so how this the measurement of this circular flow is basically nothing but the measurement of the uh, economic output in a sense so basically we if you can measure the circular flow of income 
will be able to arrive at the aggregate of the entire economic output so this is what is the difference between the microeconomics and macroeconomics further the microeconomics has in developing policies appropriate resource distributions at farm level so in in the case of microeconomics the focus is basically the uh, farm as an unit of analysis and how the resource allocations is optimal for the purpose of farm the farm basically intends to maximize profit and minimize the cost so from that point of view the microeconomics is studied on the other hand if you look at the macroeconomics it helps in developing policies appropriate resource distributions at aggregate level or at the national level so here the unit of analysis is the entire country where you will be studying how the resource distribution results in the gross domestic product of the entire economy or the national income of the entire economy now with this background uh, i have attempted to define this macroeconomics in this sense macroeconomics is the study of economics aggregate output employment and general price level on the one hand and policies such as fiscal monetary and trade, trade policies to regulate them regulate the same that means in macroeconomics we are discussing the economics aggregate such as aggregate output the employment or unemployment related issues and the general price level on the other hand we are also discussing different policies such as fiscal policies monetary policy and trade policy with the intention of how these policies can be used effectively to regulate the entire economy is this clear at this stage or if you have any doubt you can ask on the definitions of economics and the difference between micro and macro economics is there any questions please feel free to ask If there is no questions, or you would like to ask at the end, then we shall proceed. Okay. So now, from the above definitions, we can summarize this at below. In macroeconomics broadly, you will be discussing three objectives: that is, output, employment, and price stability. In order to achieve this objective, we have three instruments: fiscal instruments, monetary instruments, and trade policies. Now, come to the first that is output. But output is basically measured over a period of time, generally over one year time period. That is, we have different measures of output. There are different measures like GDP, GNP, and Uh, GDP at market price, GDP at factor cost, GDP at basic price, uh, and NDP at market price, NDP at factor cost, NDP at uh, basic price. Like different measures of outputs are there. Now, whatever way you measure, the objective of macroeconomics is basically the growth in the output. The growth in the output means how the economic output is growing. Over a period of time, that is one point of time to another point of time. So, for example, what was the output previous year? That is March and 2019. And what is the output this year, March end? Because March to uh, 31st March to 1st April, 1st April to 31st March is considered as our financial year. So. All the statistics of this output are measured in terms of this financial year only. So, uh, if we are looking at or comparing the output in these two different time periods, that is, uh, what was the GDP at year ending two thousand nineteen March, and what is the output 
in uh, year ending 2020 march then we can see the growth in the output let it suppose uh, the output in the time period t is 2020 march 31st and time period t minus 1 that is um, march uh, 2019 so this uh, growth in the output would be y t or gdp at time period t minus gdp at time period t minus 1 whole divided by gdp at time period t minus 1 into 100 so we'll get a percentage growth so this is the way we can see how year on year the output is growing or falling so in a uh, developed developed economy generally we'll see the growth rate would be very slow maybe 0.1% 0.2% or things like that but economies like india china who are developing or which is underdeveloped you will be able to see the growth rate at a very high rate maybe 6% 7% 8% or even double digit we are talking about double digit growth also maybe 10% growth is possible so the objectives basically what happens in the context of an on uh, underdeveloped economy is the natural resources or the economic resources are highly unutilized or underutilized and there is possibility to utilize them properly so that we can uh, achieve a higher rate of economic growth so the economic growth uh, to in order to achieve that economic growth we need to facilitate the economy through appropriate fiscal policy monetary policy and trade policy similarly the next objective is unemployment unemployment or employment so any economy would like to see as less as possible unemployed people in the economy or the level of employment should be as high as possible there should not be any unemployment in the economy that means anyone who is willing to work at the going wage rate should be able to get a job that is what is his employed then we have of course different types of unemployment underemployment or disguised unemployment or we have also the frictional un unemployment or we have also the structural unemployment so to deal with each of these category of unemployment the policy interventions requires also differ for example structural employment means uh, the structure of the economy has changed you have produced one kind of skill set in the economy but there is a demand for another type of skill set for employment so there would be structural employment what is required in the job the economy has produced something differently fictional unemployment is suppose a person is changing job temporarily he may be unemployed he is searching for job he is active actively searching but currently he is not employed maybe in three months time four months time he would be a, get an employment in this context there are certain policies like uh, for example even publishing the employment news by circulating information uh, that there is a vacancy in such and such job such and such location uh, it is possible to um, provide employment and ensure that unemployment is lesser in the economy so uh, also we need to always have policies that matches the uh, skill set of the people and what is required in the economy to be produced so that there is less and less structural unemployment in the economy so this is yet another macroeconomic objective to ensure that unemployment rate in the economy is as low as possible and then the third major objective is the price stability due to various reasons the general price level in the economy fluctuates so you will see a trade cycle or fluctuations in the general price level which means there are phases of uh, recession uh, recovery depression recession depressions recovery and then we have got also boom so different phases of business cycles are there what is the recessions 
suppose you are getting two consecutive quarters negative growth rate in the gdp then we make all the situation such recession now when this trend continues for many more months or quarters then the economy will get into depression mm -hmm. then there is a need for recovery but when you plot this you will see that there is a the on an average the economy is growing that means each subsequent peak and drop in the peak and drop peak means the highest point drop is the lowest point in the business cycle so each subsequent peak and drop in the business cycle would be at a higher and higher level so the general trend line would be upward sloping that means the general price level tends to increase over a period of time which we generally call inflation so all these objectives can be achieved using the fiscal policy monetary policy and trade policy because they are the instruments or they are the weapons in the armory of the government to deal with the problems of lack of output or less less growth rate unemployment and price instability so but in general the output related issues are handled basically by the fiscal policy while the price stability is basically handled by the monetary authority through the use of monetary policy now what is fiscal policy the fiscal policies are the policies related to the finance department so basically what they do is imposition of tax subsidy then public debt related policies okay so all these policies relating to uh, taxation subsidies public expenditure debt all this comes under the fiscal policy now when there is public expenditure it gives huge income to the people and thereby increases the output similarly by imposing tax uh, the government can take away your income and thereby contracts the uh, growth in the economy so heavy amount of tax and then we are also talking about tax and transfer mechanism we know that people with higher income will have uh, a very low mpc or marginal propensity to consume and people with a low level of income may have a very high marginal propensity to consume therefore we if we, if a government use the tax and transfer mechanism that means imposing tax to the people of high income group and transferring that money to the poorer category of people in terms of subsidy then you will see that overall mpc would be of the poor people are high and therefore they are likely to spend a larger fraction of their income or disposable income on consumption and this would lead to economic growth so tax and transfer mechanism is a part of a uh, tax and subsidy mechanism or tax and transfer mechanism is a part of the fiscal policy similarly if you come to the monetary policy the monetary authority or the central bank or that is rbi in the case of reserve bank of india in the case of india uh, is the monetary authority of the country now it has only one thing in control that is the supply of money by increasing or decreasing the supply of money it can impact the interest rate and thereby influence the economic objectives like uh output employment and price stability it has its own implications okay so the monetary policy is basically talking about the uh way the money supply is regulated in the economy by the central monetary authority that is rbi in the case of india now there are different rates like the rate at which the bank borrow money from the uh from the reserve bank or the bank Uh, the reserve bank borrow money from the commercial bank that is reverse repo rate we have repo rate and the reverse repo rate now these two rates are also used effectively to uh, bring in changes in the money supply and thereby changes in the rate of interest in the economy now the rate of interest is a cost for the employer now when there is an uh, increase in the rate of interest 
the cost of investment goes up and the the overall investment in, in the economy may uh, re reduce similarly if the money supply increases and the rate of interest falls then people may find it easy to invest however interest rate is not the only thing that determines the investment in the economy the investors generally compare the marginal efficiency of capital and the interest rate to arrive at the investment decisions so how we seeing the future whether whatever he is investing will he be able to get a good return on it? so that is the part of the monetary policy similarly we have trade policies like imposing trade barriers now we are seeing during covid 19 how india government is trying to impose certain trade barriers on china so that is also that would have its own implications on output employment and the price levels of the economy so um, generally we are all members to world trade organizations but there are certain uh, trade restrictive policies that can be also um, adopted in order to impact these broad macroeconomic objectives such as output employment and price stability or any other political objectives so this is basically the about the objectives of macroeconomics and the various instrument to achieve these objectives that is objectives are output employment and price stability to keep it very simple and how to achieve this objective that is growth in the output and then ensuring full employment in the economy and ensuring price stability that is there should not be too much fluctuations in the general price level of the economy and how we can use achieve the effective fiscal monetary and trade policy now in this context it is worth noting that the fiscal policy monetary policy trade policy they are not uh, contradictory rather they are complementing to each other so this it is possible that what a policy fiscal policy can do can be uh, can be um, ignored by the monetary authority and have another policy which is running entirely in the opposite direction so a proper coordination between the fiscal authority and the monetary authority is very much essential to ensure the objectives uh, ensure that the macroeconomic objectives are achieved um, as desired so is this clear is this clear now uh, in the past unit uh, you have also the goods market or the is curve and lm curve uh, the goods market basically talks about the is curve which shows the combination of interest rate and level of income that are consistent with equilibrium in the goods and service market goods and service market or the market for goods and services the is curve summarizes the changes in the goods market equilibrium equilibrium that means the plant saving must be equal to the income or the plant spending must be equal to income or the desired saving must be equal to the desired investment for the goods market to be in equilibrium another market is the money market that is the that is represented by a curve called lm curve or liquidity preference for money curve the lm curve gives us the combination of rate of interest and level of income for which money market is in equilibrium the lm curve f explains the positive relationship between interest rate and level of income and the slope of lm curve depends on liquidity preference curve and position of the money supply now in this context if you look at the goods market here also the is curve which basically the combination of interest rate and level of income and the is curve is basically a downward sloping curve and then that means there is inverse relationship between interest rate and level of income but in the money market when we are coming to the money market 
the relationship is again between the same two variables that is interest rate and the level of income however in this case the relationship is positive or the lm curve is an upward sloping curve now when you plot these two curves and in x axis you are putting your in, in income output and in y axis if you are putting your rate of interest you will find that the is curve is downward sloping from left to right and the lm curve is upward sloping since they are both functions uh, they are both the combination of rate of interest and level of income they will intersect at some point now throughout the is curve you will find that the goods market is in equilibrium in the sense that plant spending equals to income or desired spending desired saving equal to desired investment similarly in the lm curve you will find that the demand for money is equal to supply of money and accordingly uh, the uh, across the lm curve the free market will be so where this is curve and lm curve intersects Uh, the equilibrium interest rate and income in the economy is determined now the is curve if you look at the is curve is basically controlled through the fiscal side now if you see the is or goods market equilibrium your y is nothing but your c plus i plus g where c is a plus b y d y d is your disposable income or disposable income means Y D is Y minus T. That is, you have income minus your tax. That is, after tax income. So your C equal to A plus B Y D. A is autonomous consumption. B is the M P C or marginal propensity to consume. And Y D is your disposable income. Similarly, tax equal tax can be E a minimum tax plus D D Y a fraction of income is always taxed. similarly i equal to f minus gr and g is the government expenditure which at any point of time can be considered as fixed now if you add c plus i plus g you will get the income in a closed economy in an open economy you will have to include export minus import into this model similarly in the money market md is equal to ky a fraction of y minus lr that is uh, a fraction of interest so uh, this is the money demand equation and money supply that is by that is by the monetary authority is fixed that is equation 9 is any point of time you will find the money supply to be fixed that is m bar or m and for the money market to be in equilibrium your md should be equal to ms or money demand should be equal to money supply now this lm curve oh, when you solve these three equations you will get y is a function of r similarly for the goods market if you solve the equations if you substitute the value of c i and g from this equation 1 2 3 4 5 you will be able to get y as a function of r again so it is possible to show that uh, this is curve is downward sloping while the lm curve is upward sloping now oh, what is important here if you look at uh, the is curve side or the goods market you are talking about the term like tax which is a fiscal policy so goods market is basically talking about the or government expenditure g it is a it is again a part of fiscal policy while in the money market we are talking about money supply which is basically determined by the monetary authority he can print more money or he can use certain policies such as uh, change in the repo rate reverse repo rate or the bank rate and thereby increase or decrease the money supply in the economy so money supply is controlled through the uh, monetary authority so at any particular point of time the money supply may be considered as fixed and demand for money and supply of money will give you equilibrium in the money market so this money market is basically operates through the monetary uh, policy so this is how we will get 
the IS curve and LM curve, and the interaction of this IS curve and LM curve will give us the general uh, equilibrium in the economy. So, at the point where IS curve and LM curve intersects, we will have a situation where both the money market as well as goods market are in equilibrium. That is, we are getting a combination of rate of interest and level of income where both money market as well as the goods market are in, are in equilibrium. Now, if there is a shift in the IS curve or shift in the LM curve, we may result in another combination of uh, rate of interest and level of income where the goods market as well as money market should be in equilibrium. So, this is about the macroeconomic interaction. At this stage, is there any doubt? Any doubt so far? Uh, any doubt? Then if there is any doubt, I will answer. Then we'll, otherwise, we'll go to the economic system. Okay. Now, we shall proceed to the economic system. Now, uh, the basis of economic system will be covering the concept of capitalism and socialism, socialism or socialistic economy, the mixed economic system, and the Islamic economic system. This is what is covered in your unit two. Now, coming to the capitalist economy, there is a capitalist economy is one where there is private ownership of materials means of production. That means the material means of production are land, capital, and equipment. Similarly, uh, what is this private ownership? Private ownership means ownership by individual associations or companies. So the factors of production can be owned by factors of production like land, capital, equipment, etc. can be owned by the individuals or associations or companies. And, and that is the that is under the capitalist economy. The private ownership of means of production is always accompanied by the system of inheritance. If there is no inheritance system, then it makes actually no sense. The private um, ownership of capital will make no sense. So there should be a inheritance policy or system prevailed in the capitalist economy. So KS is for Uttaradikari Hebo. So Saita Jadi Nothiva, then it is of no use. So land, labor, capital, equipments, these are the materials means of production owned by private individuals or associations and companies. And there is a clearly defined inheritance systems in the capitalist economy. Now, in addition to this, freedom of enterprise, even if you are having the ownership of productions and you don't have the freedom of enterprise or you, do, you don't have the right to use the resources the way you like it. So, if you want to use the same use the resources, then the uh, mere having this private ownership or the uh, land, capital, ownership, we have to use the same So, that economy will be like a fascist economy. So, in the capitalist economy, in addition to the ownership of the means of production, there is freedom of enterprise. These two combinedly make the economy a capitalist one. That means the owners of the means of production are free to make use of their resources the way they like. The economic rationality will induce them to produce goods and services that will give them maximum profit. The way they like means, obviously, we are assuming rationality in economy. So a rational 
investor a rational enterprise will always use this resources say land labor capital ko eboli bhabar mane use karibe jaha ki tanku maximum profit ba labha debo so coming to the capitalist economy what if there is no freedom of enterprise so jodi amaro enterprise ro freedom na thai then that means even if you are the owner of capital punjibat punjipati hi thai paranti apan labor apan kor land apan ko pakare thai pare jami thai pare kintu apan ko ro right na thibo ki se apan jo bhavare chahibe taku use kari paribe to what is happening in this case the freedom of enterprise uh, is missing so if the freedom of enterprise that means the way you would like to use this resources you are not able to use tahale kon hobo the owners of the factors of productions will have to be guided by the directive issued by the government that means government ko ame chai bosiba se amuku kahibo je na tumo jami re tame rice chas paribo na dhan karibo na gahom karibo na bajra karibo to government jo bhaliya ki setre ghar banaibo kon karibo se jami re so we have to wait for the government directives with regard to the way we can use the resource so ame resource ro adhikari hi pariba kintu jodi amaku jodi government amaru jodi freedom of enterprise na thibo tahale amaku government ro direction upare nirbhar kariya ko padibo ki ame ko bhaliya sei resource ku use karibu that means this will lead the economy to a fascist type of economy similarly in the capitalist economy there is a high degree of inequality of income distribution and ownership of wealth so if you look at any capitalist economy you will find that the income distributions is huge so there are uh, the rich are very very rich and the poor are very very poor and there is a tendency in this economy to uh, towards divergence or the uh, a gap between the rich or haves and have nots keeps on increasing over a period of time in a capitalist economic structure so the freedom of choice for the consumers and laborers means under a capitalist economy the consumer can choose what they would like to consume and individual is free to choose his employer and his workplace or place of work he will he will be equipped himself accordingly of course means that means he can choose the place of work he can choose the job but he should have the qualifications required for the same otherwise you cannot choose so if you have the desired qualifications required qualifications required skill sets you would be in a position to choose that kind of job nobody will come in your way freedom of choice for the consumers and the laborers but that does not mean that you have uh, you should for, for the consumer to exercise this uh, freedom of choice uh, you should have in, enough income as well if you don't have enough income how will exercise your freedom freedom as a consumer you may not be able to consume what you like unless and until you are not having adequate money in your hand so the question is do you have enough income to enjoy the freedom of choice as a consumer and do you have enough alternative jobs or job opportunities to exercise freedom of choice as a laborer so if this is there then however in a capitalist economy from the technical point of view there is no restrictions on the freedom of choice for the consumers or for the laborer however uh, except there are certain exigencies like for example this covid 19 the government is even in the capitalist economy like america and other there is restrictions in the labor movement so in the interest of the country at times government may force but there are only there are exceptions and not the rules so there are could be situations like war or the present covid 19 and things like that where there could be government may impose restrictions both for the consumers as well as for the laborers in the interest of the or in the national interest 
but these restrictions or these restrictions on the freedom of choice is temporal and it it can be only in the national interest and it is a exceptions and not a rule in a capitalist economy the government may impose some restrictions in the time of emergency as i have discussed however they are exceptions but not the rule now what is the main features of this capitalist economy then it is basically the private ownership of materials means of production and the freedom of enterprise coupled with the rationality of the individual to invest or to utilize its resources with the intention of maximizing its objective functions so this is about the capitalist economy similarly in a socialist economy all the material means of productions like your land labor capital etc are in social ownership this is owned by the state or the state supported cooperative associations so in this case it is very essential to have a central planning in the in the context of socialist economy we are talking about soviet russia before 1989 so it was a uh, socialist economy so the resource ownership was there with the uh, government or the cooperative associations and always government comes with a centrally central planning how these resources are to be utilized that means in any economy whether it is a capitalist economy or a socialist economy or a mixed economy the broad economic problems are same that is what are these broad economic problems or the questions what is to be produced how much it is to be produced and for whom it is to be produced now since we have understood a bit of capitalist economy and also the socialist economy let us let us discuss these three questions uh, like that that is what is to be produced who should decide what is to be produced in a socialist economy it is definitely the uh, state or the cooperative but if you come to a capitalist economy what is to be produced is basically decided by the consumer because whatever is demanded by the consumer has to be produced by the entrepreneur to make profit so the broad decisions is in the capitalist economy on what is to be produced is decided by the consumer but in the case of a socialist economy this decision of what is to be produced is basically taken by the uh, state or state owned uh, or the cooperative associations or uh, appointed by the state now how much is to be produced again in a socialist economy is again decided by the cooperative state or cooperative or the state but how much it is to be produced again in a capitalist economy is decided by the demand factor which comes from the consumer but how it is produced in a socialist economy is obviously again to be is a, how it is to be produced is basically the issue of technology what kind of technology to be used now since in a socialist economy there is central planning the econo the state or the cooperative associations will always direct what kinds of uh, technology to be used for the purpose of production but coming to the capitalist economy whether it has to be a labor intensive technology or a capital intensive technology uh, what kind of technology to be used given the demand for the, the product and whatever is willing to produce has to be decided decided by the entrepreneur or the entrepreneur or the capitalist himself so the choice of technology is decided in a socialist economy by the state or the cooperative associations while the choice of technology for production purpose is determined or decided by the entrepreneur in the context of a capitalist economy now coming to mixed economy there is a coexistence of public sectors and the private sector that means some features of uh, capitalist economy would be there and some features of 
the socialist economy would be there in the case of a mixed economy. In order to be regarded as a mixed economy, the size of the public sector must be large enough to influence the allocations of the economic resources directly. That means it should have a sizable, uh, sizable control over the economy, both the public sector as well as the private sector. So they can influence the resource allocations through their standard own actions. So now these are the three broad kind of economy that we have discussed now, capitalist economy, socialist economy, and then the uh, mixed economy. Now, at this stage, if there is any doubt, please raise your doubts, if there is any doubts. Oh, there are some, oh, what is mixed economy? and what is fiscal policy. So this I will answer before I move on to the next uh, issue. Now, what is fiscal policy? That is, basically, fiscal policy is the policy of the government with regard to the public expenditure, the taxation, subsidy, public debt. That means, our finance ministry re kete paisa government expenditure karibo ba byaya karibo kete paisa amaku tax babodare kete kete tax nebo ki kaha ko kete subsidy debo subsidy in the sense ame mote jinsa subsidized rate re pds public distribution system re ration miluchi gas subsidy re miluchi to kete paisa lokon ko subsidy re diya jibo ki ese subsidy paibo को बढ़िया पाइबो डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर होबो कि डायरेक्टली कोन से जिनिसो किनिला बेलो को क्षेत्र सब्सिडी दिया जिवो ए सब जिनिसो जे उत डिसाइड हुए कि पब्लिक डेप्ट हमें केते बोरोइंग करिवा पब्लिक बोरोइंग कइना पब्लिक बोरोइंग मींस आजिरो आजि जहा पब्लिक आजि जहा पब्लिक डेप्ट होउची आजि जहा कोन डेफिसिट होउची हमरो सेटा खाली पाइ सेटा on your future generation to be impact for you. Kind of say Runo Haro is transport to the one from one generation to another generation. So all these policies concerning the uh, taxation, both direct and indirect tax, I'm a coach of GST, that is a part of your tax or goods and service tax, the taxation policy, the public expenditure policy, the public debt policy and the policy with regard to um, the policy with regard to the public debt etc are all fiscal policy so government can affect the uh, output by for example government is reducing the tax what does that mean the tax rate Local income of the fraction of the tax rate. The only one is so tonka income coruji. Say income of the so percent set tax dela. So tapa her disposable income keteroila. Dos percent money doso tonka. So he minus dosale. No bet on kala tara disposable income. So tapa her horcho korea pain. Kimba saving korea pain. No bet no bet on ka. Ponchi roila. Jodi tax comigola. Tax rate. Five percent hegola. Tamane. Tapa her. Ponchano beton carola, high percent tax money, Panchatonka textella, Ponchano tonka nijo pacre rocilla. So Taro disposable income bodigola, Jota is a corcho coriparibo, is saving coriparibo. So if this is the case for one individual, for the economy as a whole, this one percent, two percent change in the tax rate can actually affect the um, affect the uh, disposable income to a large extent and take the economy to a different direction. Is this fiscal policy clear? Fiscal policy? Is this clear? Is fiscal policy clear?
yes or no yes sir okay so then the difference between inflation and deflation acha ame inflation ka ko kouchu inflation is a state of persistent increase in the general price level of the economy so please uh, if you want to write down write down uh, inflation is a state of persistent increase in the general price level tamane inflation re kono ami kon si gotiye kimba dita jinsor gotiye kimba dita vastur price ta rise hele ami taku inflation kahu nai amaro gote index achi consumer price index achi kimba amaro producer price index achi होलसेल प्राइस इंडेक्स अच्छी सेटा बहुत गुडे कमोडिटी साठे सत्तरी अशीटा कमोडिटी को मिसे की गोटे बास्केट ऑफ गुड्स करा जाई था तारो प्रत्येक गुड्स रो किछि ना किछि वेटेज था तो सही वेटेड एवरेज प्राइस को नै की हमें इन्फ्लेशन को कंप्यूट करू छी तो इन्फ्लेशन इज नॉट द इंक्रीज इन द प्राइस इट इज द इंक्रीज इन द जनरल प्राइस लेवल दैट मीन गोटे बास्केट ऑफ गुड्स जोटा कि आम दैनन्दिन जीवन आम यूज करूचु से ही तार प्राइसटा जदि इनक्रिज हो फाइव परसेंट टू परसेंट थ्री परसेंट जहाँ भी है इन कंपेरिजन टू लास्ट इयर दिस टाइम सो विल कॉल दैट एज इनफ्लेशन तो इनफ्लेशन इज ए परसीस्टेट इनक्रिज इन द जेनेल प्राइस लेवल अब दी इकोनॉमी खाली गोटे जिनसर प्राइस बढी गला कि दीटा जिनसर प्राइस कम बढी गला हमें ताको इन्फ्लेशन कहिबा नहीं इज दिस क्लियर इज दिस क्लियर इन्फ्लेशन जे स्टेट ऑफ परसिस्टेंट इंक्रीज फरक पई बढीले भी हबनी इट्स इट शुड बी अ कंटीन्यूअस इंक्रीज इट्स अ ट्रेंड इन्फ्लेशन इज अ ट्रेंड हैलो इज दिस क्लियर और यस और नो you can write in the chat box not an issue no sir one second please inflation acha acha ame jodi ame ta ko kahiba gotie bhavo gotie basket achi gote basket re 25 30 ta jinis achi jo ta ki amaro prati dainandina jivan ra ame seta use karuchu माने गोटे बास्केट रे आमर पनीपरिया थे पेट्रोल थे इंटरनेट थे आई जिन थे ट्रांसपोर्ट कस्ट थे तो गोटे बास्केट है बास्केट राम टा आज के बास्केट टा आम कि आज के गत बर्ष यही समय पड़ूगा बुझल जदि गत बर्ष जहाँ पड़ूगा जदि शहे टाँह पड़ूगा ए बर्ष जदि से ही बास्केट को किन मत शहे दस टाँह पड़ेगा दैट मीन देर इज ए टेन परसेंट इनक्रिज इन द जेनेल प्राइस लेवल एमती ही पारे से बास्केट रिछी वस्तु दाम कमी जाए पारे कि वस्तु दाम बहुत बढ़ी जाए पारे कि टकिंग अबाउट दैट बास्केट है तो सो इफ देर इज एन इनक्रिज इन द जेनेल प्राइस लेवल of a basket of commodity then we are calling it as inflation so inflation is a state of persist persistent increase or continuous increase now ame jodi gote trend line kathiba mu kohutli trade cycle bisare trade cycle la amar recession achi amar depression achi recovery achi boom achi to tar gote peak point thai tar gote lower point thai drop boli kanti peak and drop ना तुम जब देख गोटे लाइन टे टाण ट्रेड लाइन इट वुड बी अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग बिकज इफ सब्सिक्वेट पिक एंड ट्रप वुड बी एट ए हायर लेवल तर सब्सिक्वेट मान नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट पिक एंड ट्रप टा हायर लेवल थी सो जेनेल टेन्डेन्सी वुड बी देयर दैट द प्राइस लेवल इज इनक्रिजिंग सो इनफ्लेसन इज बेसिकली दि increase in the general price level it's not individual price it's the general price level over a period of time or persistent increase in the general price level clear jodi inflation bujhi parilo tahale deflation ta opposite deflation ta 
fall in the price level so this is basket of price ta tomorrow komi komi jauthubo then you are moving towards a deflation deflation means aji sei basket ta jodi tumku 100 taka poduchi gote barsha pore sei basket ro dam ta tumku 90 taka hai pare 80 taka hai pare so then over a period of time the basket price is falling uh, i think i have already discussed about the mixed economy that means is the economy which has got both the features of the capitalist economy and the socialist economy actually all the economy except socialist economy are mixed economy the konosi bhi economy jodi seta gota socialist economy no then it is a mixed economy okay so then we will discuss about the um, little bit about the uh, last uh, part that is the Uh, Islamic economy, uh, and then again take on some more questions. So, what is Islamic economy? It is basically talking about individual liberty and freedom of choice. Like what is there in our capitalist economy? Now, if you look at private property and enterprise, is also emphasized in the case of um, the Islamic economy. and they are also talking about profit motive and possibility of unlimited efforts and reward now the islamic economy also seeks to provide effective moral filters at different levels of life and activity now they are also talking about establishing institutions in the voluntary sector as well as through the state apparatus to ensure economic development and social justice in the economy so they are also talking about there should be institutions to ensure that there is economic development and there should be institutions to ensure that the there is social justice in the society and then social justice is not sacrificed due to the economic activities now if islamic system also talks about social change has to be motivated planned and achieved through individual and collective effort all human physical and institutional factors in the production consumption and distribution of goods and services must be subject to his or her deliberate individual and social choices self interest is a natural motivating force in all human life but but self interest has to be linked to the overall concept of good and justice so even if you every individual is a human being is a self interest motivated uh, person each individual has their own self interest but that does not mean that it has to be linked with the concept of good and justice property is a trust and as such property rights are to be subject to moral limits and used as a means of fulfilling ethical objective so elements of market mechanisms are basically private property freedom of enterprise this true they are ready in the uh, capitalist structure and also the motivations for profit and reward we have seen all these elements actually in the capitalist economy as well then the spiritual guidance and historical evidence to ensure genuine profit then protections of the market mechanism and a legal framework for the fulfillment of contract that means they are talking about effort innovation creativity division of labor technology and skill and development from the economic side in addition to that they have added to it cooperation compassion justice charity solidarity so islamic economy is basically talking of it's a combination of all the ingredients that i have put in the last slide So they are talking about that. Generally, you would be knowing that in Islamic they don't take rate of interest. So they, in if you go to an Islamic bank, they will tell uh, that they will give it in writing. I don't want any interest income. So because that is not earned. So uh, this is what I had to speak for this particular two units. We have covered about the. Macroeconomics, uh, macro macroeconomics, microeconomics. What is the difference? What are the various objectives and the instruments that is output, employment, price stability, and then 
the fiscal policy, monetary policy, and trade policy as the instrument to deal with this macroeconomic objective. Then we discussed about the goods market and the money market, and how actually this requires one full class to cover. But uh, since it is there in the uh, unit one, I have touched upon this, and then uh, without getting into the derivations, I discussed how the general equilibrium can be achieved through the interaction between the IS curve and LM curve, where IS curve is the um, combination of rate of interest and level of uh, rate of interest and the level of income for which goods market is in equilibrium. LM curve is the various combination of rate of interest and level of income for which the money market is in equilibrium. Then we have discussed about this economic system, which is the uh, capitalist economy, mixed economy, socialist economy, and the um, the Islamic economy and how the decisions with regard to what is to be produced, uh, for whom it is to be produced, how it is to be produced kind of decisions uh, are taken in different types of economic structure. Uh, of course, in the chat box, there is a question about the mixed economic system. Mixed economy is basically the combination of there are certain sectors or there is coexistence of both capitalist as well as socialist economy. Both the state is also running the business as well as the liberty is given to the private individuals in certain fields. If you look at India, we have a mixed economy where certain sectors are exclusively reserved for the public sector. Certain sectors are exclusively for the private sector. Government don't interfere there. And there are certain sectors where both the public sector as well as government sector. For example, education. Education, so we have public sector like your CBSC, uh, central schools and all. And you have also private uh, schools offering the education. So there is coexistence of both uh, public sectors and private sector. For example, transport service. You have private buses, you have also public buses. So, but defense is completely under the control of the government. Private, private farms cannot enter there. But there are telecom, if you see, you have both private sector as well as public sector, like your BSNL, MTNL, and all. So the business is basically a comp uh, is taken over by both the private player as well as the public enterprise. And both have sizable um, share so that they can alter the resource allocation. I hope it is clear now. And then if you have any more doubts, please feel free to ask. Any other doubt? I have answered what is fiscal policy. I have answered what is mixed economy. And the difference between inflation and deflation. Yeah, five four minutes you can ask the questions so that I uh, hello Asi sir. Uh. Uh, sir, uh, nobody is asking, so uh, shall we wind up? Uh, there is one learner, and if she has uh, any question, then she can type in the chat box. I think she has only asked all the three questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Or she can uh, ask directly also, not an issue. If she has okay. any doubts, okay. Yeah. Or if it is clear, then we can close. Mm. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir. Hmm. Asmita, you have any doubt? Any part you feel? Hello, 
she is not replying oh okay okay no no, no she said no then no. fine uh yes sir uh thank you sir for a nice session and uh, i hope uh, all the learners uh, must uh, uh, have a clear conception about uh, indian introduction to macro economics and uh, we have learned a lot about micro economics difference between micro and uh, macro economics but uh, the objectives uh, of uh, macro economics uh, and economic system what is a capitalist economy what is a uh, socialist economy and and what is a mixed economy and uh, with special uh, reference to uh, islamic uh, economy so uh, i would like to also thank the professor barik sir for his technical support and i hope learners uh, must immensely be benefited of uh, this session and uh, by dr ashish das sir and uh, this is the official announcement of closing of the session and uh, may i please request all to be disconnected and engaged from the session thank you thank you all